So many of you out there will not be able to solve this basic math problem without the aid of a calculator, primarily because you simply just forgot all this math that you learned many years ago. But uh, let's go ahead and put your memory to the test and see if, in fact, you can do this problem. And what we have here is parentheses 1 fourth minus 1 half and parentheses divided by parentheses 2 fifths minus 1 and parentheses so if you can figure this out without the aid of a calculator, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then of course I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And a lot of you, again, are probably gonna be like, oh yes, I kind of remember this or kind of remember that. And that's perfectly fine. I'm certainly not uh, trying to make you feel bad uh, if you don't remember how to do this, because again, you know, we have these calculators, but uh, let's see if we can kind of, you know, brush off uh, some cobwebs and get you to uh, remember all that math that you learned many years ago. But here are the skills that we need in order to do this problem. So the first is PEMDAS. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'll explain that one second. Uh, we're definitely going to have to know how to work with fractions because we have some fractions here. And we're going to have to know something about positive and negative number rules. Okay, so let's go to take a look at this first thing. What is PEMDAS? Well, PEMDAS, this is simply an acronym uh, for the order of operations. So anytime in mathematics we can have uh, a math problem that involves more than one mathematical operation, and a mathematical operation is addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, let me go and write a nice little multiplication, operator and division and powers and some other things. But here we have multiple things going on. We have parentheses, we have subtraction. So we're going to uh, need to know the proper order of operations. And this little acronym right here, PEMDAS, tells us how to do that. So let's just quickly, quickly explain this. So P, the, well, first of all, let me just state that this is a checklist that goes from left to right. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. So if you have parentheses in your problem, you're going to do the math, uh, all the math that is inside those parentheses first. So obviously we have parentheses here, so we're gonna have to focus on doing all the math that is inside of those uh, parentheses first. I'll explain exactly how to do that in just one second, but let's kind of finish up this checklist. So E stands for powers, but really it stands for exponents. But if you had something like two to the third power, uh, you would do these things next. This little number up here is called the exponent part of a power, and the two is called the base. The entire thing is a power, but uh, that's what E stands for. Now, the next thing is multiplication or division. This is a con uh, very confused. A lot of students think, oh, you have to do multiplication first and then division. No, we, we're going to do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right, and then addition and subtraction whatever we see first from left to right. Okay, so that's just a quick, fast overview of the order of operations. So we're gonna have to be paying attention to this as we do this problem. Now, the other thing that we need to understand is how to subtract fractions and divide fractions and multiply fractions. I'll show you the, all this in one second. And then we're gonna actually end up with some negative numbers here. So we're gonna have to be able to deal with positive and negative numbers as well. Okay, so let's just go ahead and uh, take this step by step. And so the first thing we need to consider is our order of operations. And as I indicated with PEMDAS here, okay, and there is a lovely saying that goes along with PEMDAS, this acronym that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, so that's just a little uh, memory aid to remember the order of operations. I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. And maybe some of you actually learned uh, that phrase many years ago. It's been around forever. But uh, anyways, we see here that indeed we have parentheses, and we're going to have to focus on uh, taking care of all the math that is inside of these parentheses first. And we have two sets of parentheses. So basically, we're going to kind of think of these as two separate problems. So we're going to get the uh, answer for this a problem and the answer for this problem, and then 
We'll talk about dividing the results next. But let's go ahead and get uh, started on doing this math. And what we have here is one fourth minus one half. Okay. So I'm going to do this problem first, and then we'll do two fifths minus one in one second. But I just want to show you something here that stylistically, notice how these fractions have an angle fraction bar. Now, a lot of you uh, probably are used to writing your fractions this way, and that's perfectly fine. However, I'm going to encourage you to write your fractions, if you do write your fractions with an angled fraction bar, to write them uh, using a horizontal fraction bar. So one fourth, we want to write this way, minus one half, we'll write it this way. So this is just a, but, a much better way to write fractions, especially as you progress into things like algebra. Okay, But there's nothing wrong, again, if you write your fractions this way, but try to write them this way. It's just going to uh, benefit you later on as you continue to learn more math. Okay, so we have one fourth minus one half. Well, how do we subtract fractions? Well, to add or subtract fractions, we need the same denominator. So if you look here, we have four. This is a uh, this is the denominator of this fraction, and two is the denominator of this fraction. We cannot add or subtract fractions unless we have the same denominator. So we need to find the same denominator, and finding that same denominator, whatever that is, is called the lowest common denominator. And in this case, it is four. Now I can't possibly teach you, a, give you like a full, um, you know, course instruction on the order of operations, fractions, and positive and negative numbers in this one little video. I'm just kind of highlighting some of these skills. I will give you some specific recommendations in just one second, but I'm just highlighting the skills that we need to uh, have in order to do this problem. Okay, so here uh, we have to ask ourselves, well, what is the lowest common denominator of these two fractions? That uh, answer is four. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change this fraction's denominator such that it is four, because right here, we already have a four, and in order to do that, all I have to do is multiply this denominator by two, but if I multiply the denominator by two, I also have to multiply multiply the numerator by two, so I'm gonna end up with two over four. Okay, so this is what we have, and now finally we can subtract these fractions because the denominators are the same. So how do we subtract fractions or add fractions when the denominators are the same? Easy. All we have to do is add or subtract the respective numerators, which are the top numbers of the fraction. So we have one minus two over four. Now we're gonna put this over the denominator. So we have one minus two, we have to be super careful here because we have positive and negative numbers going on here. So one minus two is the same thing as one plus a negative two. So that is negative one. So the answer here is negative one fourth. All right, so as I promised, we are going to be dealing with uh, positive and negative numbers. But uh, again, if you forgot uh, this stuff, don't panic, don't despair. I will give you some specific recommendations so you can relearn all of this and much, much more. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next fraction that we have to deal with, or next fraction problem. So that is going to be this part right here, 2 fifths minus 1. So let's go ahead and get the answer of that. And this, again, we're just going to treat this as a separate problem. All right, so 2 fifths minus 1. So let's go ahead and just write this fraction using a horizontal fraction bar. This is not a requirement. It's just good practice. All right, so 2 fifths minus 1. So here is the problem that we're going to be doing. So right here, we need to think about this 1. You're like, well, I have 2 fifths minus 1. How can I uh, think of this as a fraction minus another fraction? Because we have a fraction minus 1. Well, it all depends. A lot of you, it depends on your math skills or how can you, uh, or how, um, you know, well you could interpret number problems like this. But the easiest way to approach this problem, in my opinion, is to turn this one into a fraction. So anytime you want to write a number as a fraction, let's say I have the number four, and you're like, well, you know, that's not a fraction. Well, if you just put it over one, now you can think of it as a fraction. So four is the numerator and one is the denominator. So let's think of the number one as a fraction. We'll just write that as one over one. Of course, one divided by one is a fraction. Okay, so here we have our problem. We have two fifths minus one over one. Again, we do not have the same denominator. What is the lowest common denominator? Well, the LCD here is five. So uh, we're gonna have to take a look at these two denominators. We're like, all right, we have a five here, but we have a one here. So let's fix this fraction up by multiplying both uh, the numerator and denominator by five. 
So we're going to end up with 2 fifths minus 5 over 5. All right, so here, of course, 5 divided by 5 is 1. And now we have uh, the same denominator or the lowest common denominator. So all we have to do is subtract the respective numerator. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So 2 fifths minus uh, 5 over 5 is going to be equal to 2 minus 5 over 5. Again, we're going to go ahead and subtract the numerators and put that over the denominator. So 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Again, we have to be very careful with our positive and negative numbers. So 2 minus 5 is the same thing as 2 plus negative 5 over 5. Okay, so now we have negative 3 fifths. So we did the two uh, parts of the problems that involve fractions, at least subtracting the fractions. So we need to go ahead and uh, kind of incorporate this into the problem this way. All right, so we have 1 fourth minus 1 half. That's equal to negative 1 fourth. And then we did 2 fifths minus 1, and that's equal to negative 3 fifths. So now we could divide these two fractions. So effectively, the problem that we're going to be doing right now is this. Negative 1 fourth divided by negative 3 fifths. So now we're going to have to recall exactly how to divide fractions. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So now we are dividing fractions. I have negative one fourth divided by negative three fifths. Now let's just kind of quickly review the rules for positive and negative numbers. So this is really easy. When it comes to multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers, uh, the deal is this. If the signs are the same, the answer is positive. Okay. So if the signs are different, the answer is negative. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if it's a negative divided by a negative, the signs are the same. It's a negative and negative, so the answer is going to be positive. If we're multiplying a negative and a negative, the answer is also going to be positive. So the rules for positive and negative numbers for multiplication and division are super easy. Okay, But if the signs are different, so in other words, a negative divided by a positive or a positive divided by a negative, whether this is division or multiplication, the answer will be negative. Okay, so here, uh, obviously, we have a negative divided by a negative. The signs are the same, so our final answer is going to be positive. So don't, uh, you know, get distracted by these negative signs, but we'll leave them in here anyway. So let's go ahead and talk about um, how to divide fractions. All right, so how do we divide fractions? Well, really, we don't divide fractions per se. What we do is we change um, the problem from division to multiplication. So we're going to uh, take these two fractions and we're going to change the problem from division to multiplication. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to flip the fraction to the right of the division operator. OK, so this fraction is three fifths or negative three fifths. And we're going to flip it upside down. OK, so that's going to become five thirds or negative five thirds. So this is how we divide fractions. What we're going to do is change the problem from division to multiplication by flipping the fraction to the right of the division sign. So now what we uh, have here is this problem. We have a multiplication problem, negative one fourth times negative three, uh, negative five thirds, excuse me. So let's go ahead and see how to do this. This is super easy. So when we are uh, multiplying fractions, all we have to do is simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we have negative one times negative five. These are our numerators. So we'll write this this way over four times three. This is our denominators. OK, so let's go ahead and finish this up. So negative times negative, this will be positive. Positive times positive, of course, is positive. So uh, negative one times negative five is a positive five. And four times three is a positive 12. And uh, anytime you're dealing with fractions, you want to make sure that your answers are fully simplified and reduced. And this one here is. 
Okay, so hopefully this problem was interesting enough. And if you stuck with me for all this time, I certainly appreciate it. But again, you know, the whole idea behind my YouTube channel is to try to make math interesting and explain things at a, at a pace that everyone can understand. And a lot of you were fantastic in math many years ago. And you're like, boy, you know, I was great at math, but I just forgot this stuff. Well, it's kind of like riding a bike. But with math, there is a lot of skills. If you want to get back to how good you were in math way back, maybe, you know, in high school or college, you're going to, you know, it's just not going to come back automatically. You're going to have to redo and relearn a lot of these skills. But if you have great math aptitude, you should be able to relearn math pretty easily. But if you struggle to math, do not you know, look at that and saying, well, there's no way I'm going to be successful in math now. Because a long time ago, whatever the situation was, I could guarantee you, you are much better um, at learning as, a, as an adult, if that's your situation. Okay. Uh, we just kind of mature over time and we're more, uh, more motivated. But uh, hopefully this video was interesting enough for you to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.